Hi, and welcome to this special bulletin here at TVC22. Not too long ago, we've learned that a lot of financing has been cut from the libraries. Obviously, it will affect here in Clarence Rockland, the uh, Clarence Rockland Library, of course. So to tell us more about it, I have the general director, which is Katerina Rouse, um, telling us what will happen and what's going on with this issue. Hi, Katerina. How are you Hi, doing? Hi, Stephanie. I'm good. How are you? Good. Now we're going to start with the first question. How, how is a library financed? That's a very good question. Uh, the majority of a library financing actually comes from the municipality. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, we also have our day-to-day -day income that comes from late fees, that comes from people buy secondhand books that we have, um, event fees for some of the events. Most of our events are free, but some of them do have a fee to cover costs. So we have those. We also have, a, sometimes the province puts out grants so sometimes we might get, in one year, we'll get a bit of money to buy some extra computers or some iPads or things of that nature. But every year we also have the Public Library Operating Grant, and that is part of, it's not a big enough chunk, but that's an important chunk that we get. Um, that was safe this year with the cuts, mm -hmm. but that amount has been the exact same amount for 22 years. It has not changed a single cent for all libraries across all of Ontario. So I don't know if you want me to talk about... Yeah, for sure. Last year, mm -hmm. we have the Federation of Ontario Public Libraries. This is an organization along with the Ontario Library Association. They get together on behalf of public libraries in Ontario and they lobby for us. They go to the government, they go to Queen's Park, and they try to get us changes. Last year, they lobbied to try to get a stop of the freeze, so we would no longer be frozen at the current amount, which is from the same as 22 years ago, mm -hmm. and that we would start getting increases to our public library operating grant, which is called the PLOG. The government at the time were fully backing this. They thought it was a great idea because it's true, libraries are the backbone of a community, Everybody goes to the library. We have a lot of people that enter our library and it, numbers continue to increase. The numbers do not decrease as some government officials would have you believe. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not true, it's a myth. Um, this year we found out that no, we are not getting an increase to our plug. However, it will remain the same. At least we are not getting a decrease. So for that, we're thankful. Mm -hmm. However, we did find out that there was a cut to the Southern Ontario Library Service and to Ontario Library Service North. So those are called SOULS and OLSN. I'll just refer to it as SOULS for now okay. because they directly affect us. Mm -hmm. um, SOULS currently runs on a budget of about 3.1 million a year. Their budget was cut by 1.5 million. I don't know of any industry that can have a cut that drastic and not have a severe effect, a severe impact to their services and to their employees. So due to this cut, Souls had to review all of the different things that they do for us. They help libraries across the province, mostly medium to small sized libraries. We figure in in the medium sized libraries. Mm -hmm. We use them every day. Things that we use them for that's the most known to our patrons is the interlibrary loans. So if we don't have a book on the shelves here, we look in our computer, oh, they have it in Aurelia. Oh, they have it in Cornwall. We contact them and they send it by courier. This service has been stopped. Okay. Every library across Ontario right now cannot do interlibrary loans because of this. Okay. So it has affected a lot of people. Last year alone, the Clarence Rockland Public Library saved $20,000 by not having to buy the books that we borrowed through interlibrary loan just in 2018. Now we also get delivery from some of our suppliers, some of our book suppliers, also on the vans that Souls uses for the deliveries. So it, there's the impact of that as well. 
um, one of our suppliers is saying it's looking like each box will now cost us upwards of $60 to send to us. And they send us on average four or five boxes. So that's, that's a lot more. Normally we don't pay. The Souls van is part of a service that we've mm -hmm. received for many years. Um, also, the sad part about this is Souls has 18 office employees, 24 van employees. 24 people have now lost their jobs. And we okay. were told that jobs would not be lost, that mm -hmm. people would try not to, you know, cut jobs. Yeah. Um, we did get notification from the Ministry of uh, Tourism, Culture and Sport. And their line, the official line, is that Souls and OLSN were the ones who made the decision to let go of these people. That is an unfair, unfair comment. I don't know how anyone could see a 50% cut to their budget and not have it affect staff. Yeah. That is unfair. That is like telling somebody who's drowning that they're not kicking their feet hard enough to stay above water mm. because they're drowning. When you get cut 50% of your budget, yeah. you're drowning. And they offer us so much. They offer us training. They offer us, um, even our eBooks are through Souls. We get a okay. consortium. So okay. what they do is they take a whole bunch of libraries who all go in on one sort of subscription. And that's mm -hmm. a consortium. And it's all the libraries that normally would not be able to afford. If we lose the eBook consortiums, we cannot afford eBooks. Okay. Our library here can't afford it. So I heard today that according to Souls, cutting the drivers for the courier was actually only 1.3 million. So there's still so there's still, there's still another place that they're gonna have to cut somewhere. Okay. So it's tough. This will affect us in the costs of our courier costs. Mm -hmm. We don't know, in end of May, they're talking about how they may start up the software again for the interlibrary loans, but there's been no talk of how we're gonna get it from library to library. We may potentially have to start doing courier and postage. However, we don't have the funding for that. Yeah, exactly. We do not have an increase in our public library operating grant. There's been no increase. So I did a rough calculation and last year, just the courier cost alone for the interlibrary loans Mm -hmm. would have cost us at least $2,600. And that's only with the library rate through Canada Post. Plus... It doesn't yeah. sound like a lot of money, but for us here, it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're a nonprofit organization. The city gives us as much money as they can. They're exactly. very good to us. For sure. We certainly can't ask them to cover for that. Mm -hmm. But is the government going to then give us postage, the pro provincial government? I, I, we don't know yet. So you guys are a standstill to know what are the next steps and how it will really affect yeah. the services that you provide here in Clarence Rockland. Absolutely. Now, you tell me that um, financing is, um, has not increased in 22 years. Let's just say I've got a magic wand today and I'm telling you um, I can give you the money you need to do a optimal operating here at the library. How much money would that entail, you think? That's a good question. Depending on a number of factors, I think it would be fair to say we should probably get another 25,000 from the Ontario government to get at a better place, um, at least. What other services could you offer then uh, if you have that money? We would be able to offer more programming. We have, uh, currently we have an adult programmer who is part-time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've been offering so much programming you for have. adults in the past couple of years, and it keeps increasing and increasing. I mean. Bridge nights, book clubs, movie nights, yep. art parties, all sorts of things. Ideally, that employee should be full time. Yeah. And we could offer even more. And if there's a need for it. There really is a requirement for it, and it's been requested. So 
that is one of the things that would assist for that. Also, we're developing our teen programs for the summer. Okay. We need help there. Even something as small, well, it's not as small, but as, as vital as our computers. We do not currently have a regular changing of our computers and even our staff furniture or furniture in the library, some of it falling apart, some of it torn. We can't replace that because right now we're just going on base budget kind of thing. Okay. So actually 25,000 is probably a bit low, but that would be a, at a minimum. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now you tell me that you offer a lot of programs, programming, sorry. Um, how, my, how many people do actually attend those programs and uh, are they well appreciated? Are the programs well appreciated? Yes. Very well appreciated. Yep. The numbers keep going up. We have at least 10,000 people that have attended programs in the past year. And this is good. It just keeps yeah. rising and rising and rising. We have programs also for the schools. We get the schools to come mm -hmm. in and do different things. In May, we're going to have the Forest of Reading for the, a bunch of the schools around the area are coming for the reveal. The Forest of Reading is a, a voting. So te uh, teens and primary school kids mm -hmm. across the province vote on their favorite books okay. in each award. So there's a Silver Birch Award. Um, Tamarack Express Award and there's 10 books that they have to choose from. They have to read a certain number of books and then they vote. So the classrooms across Rockland are doing this. Okay. They're reading the books in class or the teachers are allowing the kids to bring the books home and then they are voting on them. So they will all come here, the different schools, and find out who the winners are for the different awards. Okay. So that is a very popular one with the schools okay. and with the students and they get really excited about it. Our programs are part of what make it a community feel here at the library. And you need that just as much as the books. Mm -hmm. However, I don't want to diminish the requirement of all the books as well. Mm -hmm. We were told as well from uh, the ministry that the requirement to shuttle books through interlibrary loan was not necessary in this electronic age. Mm. Well, I did the calculation. In 2018, 1% of our patrons used ebooks. That was our total loans, 1%. Our, our community, they love the actual books, print books, paper books. So it's, it's not going away. No, I don't think, I think that when you like to read, you like the feel of a book. Yeah. And, uh, and you like to have it in your hands, you like to feel it, you like to turn the pages. Absolutely. I think that's part of an experience. I think reading is an experience and that's what a library offers. Yeah. That experience, that knowledge. Absolutely. Does, will any of what's going on right now affect how much book you can still uh, acquire in your library? Because you do have a well-rounded um, number of books. It won't affect the number of books we currently are able to, to obtain, but the problem comes in on the books that we normally get through interlibrary loan. Okay. That's a lot of people who won't get books that they have been wanting to read. So now, If we need to yeah. get the books for them, we may mm -hmm. have to cut back the other books we're buying. Could you offer a charging fee if you'd like an interlibrary? I, I know it's not ideal because it's a service you want to offer to the residents. We are not allowed to do that through the You're public not. library operating through the Public Libraries Act. We are not allowed to charge for interlibrary loans. Okay, so that also is an it's issue. not an option. We can't charge for the couriering. We can't charge for mail. We can't charge for the service whatsoever. Okay, so you're stuck with what's going on right now yeah and you can't do anything about it except trying to find it in somehow in your budget correct yeah so now talking about budget are you anticipating any cuts going on here at the library of Clarence Rockland because we, of that because of that I'm not anticipating any cuts at this time okay 
um, part of what we want to do. We, have a, we had a gala that was booked for May 11th. Yes. Part of the cost of that was going to go to help any programs or anything we want to do here at the library. Mm -hmm. um, it's our big fundraiser. It's our only big fundraiser. Um, yes. We have actually postponed it until October 5th due to the current flood in our beloved city. For sure. It's not the time for doing this kind of event and we want to give people time to recuperate from everything that we're going through right now. So in October, October 5th, we're going to do it again. We're going to plan for it that day. And hopefully the community will come out and support the library mm -hmm. because that is where we will need some help from the community. So maybe a reason to have more attendance at that gala because yeah. I attended last year yeah. and I thought it was a really nice event. It, it, it's glamorous, it's, it's fun, and it was really laid back and it was here at the library so people can, you know, get a feel of the library if you haven't been to the library. Yeah. It was a lot of fun, and it was so much fun to have you there, too. We had <laughs> so you. much fun. So let's just say people, um, they, they are sympathetic to your, your cause right now, and they want to contribute to your gala because it would be a great investment mm -hmm. because the more you have, the more you fundraise, the more yeah. services you're going to be able to provide for the community. Correct. Um, who do they contact? They can contact myself mm -hmm. or they can contact the library directly at the front desk. We are accepting donations mm -hmm. still. Um, even though the gala has been moved to October, yeah. we still have a few people that have already given donations and we're still holding on to those. It's earmarked yeah. for the gala, so um, it's all part of it. So they can still give mm -hmm. donations up until that date. So th the best place to email would be biblioinfo at bpcrpl.ca and that is also on our website okay yeah, yeah that's, that's also on our website so bpcrpl.ca is our website or just call in at the library and yeah. ask for katrina yeah. and uh, you'll gladly <laughs> absolutely accept anything on absolutely. on the behalf of the library people have already been very generous yes yeah you also always have a silent auction during that event. Will that still be going on? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, that is still happening. Perfect. Yeah. So obviously, um, I think we're done, but I would like you to give us an update if ever anything changes in the library. Of course. And the services that might be cut. And for you at home, if you want to donate, if you want to contribute to the cause of the library, we do encourage that you discuss it with uh, Katerina Rouse, the uh, general director here at the Clarence Rockland Library. This was Stephanie for a very special community spotlight. Thank you very much, Clarence Rockland.